hello guys welcome to my channel um, and I'm glad that you're here if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe like share the video um, after you watch the video um, so in my last video in my introductory video I introduced chemistry and I uh, tell you what chemistry is how chemistry is live and how you actually use chemistry on your day-to-day -day activity so um and i said i'm going to be teaching chemistry and i'm also going to be teaching uh math um in the next in a different video but in this video we're going to be discussing chemistry and most people think chemistry is hard um especially those that are about to go to college they see chemistry and say chemistry is very hard from what i'm seeing because mostly they see this equation and they oh this equation it's scary. Will I be studying these equations and 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 will I have to know this equation? Uh, this equation seems hard, but over time, you you if you study chemistry, you will know that chemistry is indeed a very simple subject um, if you follow some of the guidelines and rules, right? So, uh, if you want to learn chemis chemistry, the first thing you have to understand is chemistry has a language and once you understand the language of chemistry once you understand the definition of various terms in chemistry it becomes a very easy science subject uh, chemistry is one of the oldest subject in the world in the in the, in the science sphere uh, i think math is uh, because uh, at some point every human uh, begins with math uh, and then um, how to count your fingers how many fingers do you have five fingers but I think after that, you start looking at chemistry on how your body reacts to the environment. When it's cold, you feel cold. Uh, your pores um, and your air on your, on, your, on your hand or your body rise up. Uh, your body increases temperature so to counteract the effect of cold. When it feels warm, right? When it feels warm, your, your body uh, try to lower the temperature so you can feel cold. You know so that is chemistry there's a reason why that happens or when you can't sleep at night or when you have testosterone right all this is chemistry so chemistry is quite old but back in the day they don't call it chemistry they call it alchemy uh, because at that time there was little knowledge about how uh, matter interact and why did they interact and what caused them to interact so briefly chemistry is the study of matter and it changes it undergoes. And they might ask you, what is chemistry? Chemistry uh, is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes, right? So matter, matter is anything that has weight and occupy space. It can be very small, it can be very big. The air on your air, on your air is matter, right? And when you use, um, when you use a kind of like a, a lotion, or when you use a kind of like cream on your hair, you know, um, on your air, it changes somehow. Sometimes your air becomes slick, or it becomes shiny. Uh, that is chemistry, You're using a particular material, um, on a different material, right? Your, your your air is made up of a different material, and then this and um, there's something that happens. Your hair either you know, slicks down, but over time it comes back to its original state. Or um, when you cook food, right? When you cook your food using chemistry, there's something that's happening there. Energy is being introduced into that food, and that food undergoes some changes. So that food you're cooking is matter, and how heat. Or temperature affect that food you chemistry chemist chemists will study that right so chemistry is a study of matter and it changes it undergoes and chemistry is using different subject is using biology geology uh, in physics uh, and many other uh, aspects of science even in medicine chemistry is used if they give you ibuprofen or they give you aspirin or they give you uh, a Tylenol right um, all these compounds is made from chemistry. These are compounds that are made 
uh, that actually can be used in your system and make you feel better. So in medicine, we use chemistry. That's why chemistry is the godfather of all sciences because chemistry can explain almost everything in science. If chemistry uh, uh, is, is taught and everybody has a, a special knowledge of chemistry, the whole world will, uh, will be very, very different because right now chemistry is used to change the world. Uh, the reason why you can drive your car is because of chemistry. Right, so, so chemistry is central to all science, it's central to everything. Um, the reason why your car will rust if you live in, say, New York or in colder areas faster than if you're in the south is because of chemistry. Because rust, which is, which is uh, Fe2O3, is, which is ion, right, is, is, is used in most vehicles. Most vehicles have iron. And wherever you have water, we have iron uh, plus oxygen, right? When you have that, um, you're gonna you're gonna have a, a chemistry. Uh, you're gonna have a chemistry between these two right here, and they're gonna end up with Fe Fe two uh, O three, right? And then you can have put a two here. So let's put four right here, right? So it's gonna be four here. So you have you balance the reaction four Fe plus three O two, which is six oxygen and uh, four ion, uh, four ion six oxygen two times three six, right? So this happened. This right here is rust. And you look at your car, I'm like, why is my car rusty? Well, you live in an environment that has a lot of snow, a lot of moisture in the air, things like that, you know, and then it reacts with your onion on your car, and then you have rust. So chemistry can explain all kinds of stuff. But in chemistry, um, we do a lot of measuring, recording, and just simple calculations. The calculation in chemistry is not, uh, we, we had to do calculus in chemistry, right? <laughs> So if you're doing if you're doing mathematics, you're probably going to do calculus, differentiation, which I'm going to teach this in when I get when I get to the math class. But in chemistry, we don't really do more of this high uh, you know high calculation, high math like that. We do simple math, but they are very very important math uh, math right. We do a lot of recording, um, we do a lot of um, uh, calculation, uh, but simple calculations. I will do a lot of observation. One of the things about chemists is that they observe things a lot. A chemist can sit one place and observe why is the tree green? You know, why is it that the tree is green? And then you can start looking at different observations. You know, why, why the leaves of the tree are green? Uh, why some yellow? Why some orange? A chemist observes a lot. That is the part of being a chemist. You have to be able to observe things. So in chemistry, one of the things we do a lot in chemistry is observation, calculation, simple calculation, and we do a lot of recording. That is the job of a chemist. And once we do all this, we come to a conclusion from all that we do, and we use that to postulate a law, a theory, or to make things happen. You know, so if I mix this with these, this happened. You know, uh, why does this happen? Then you record that. And then you can use that understanding to create new uh, new compounds, right? So that is chemistry. So in, chemi in chemistry, we do a lot of calculations, like I said earlier. And those calculations, we always do them in SI units. In SI units. So chemists do a lot of calculation in SI units. And in this class today, we're going to be talking about SI units. What are SI units, you know? Why do we use SI? Why, why don't we use Imperial? You know, we use SI for everything in, 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 in chemistry. And in today's class, our focus is gonna be it's gonna be on SI units. Our focus. So what I'll do is I'll give you different SI units, and then I'll give you their abbreviation, their meaning, and then I'll give you the short form and an example of how you write. Um, this uh, how it uses SI units, right? So SI units are the standard units uh, used in science, mostly chemistry, and when you're talking about different things, right? So let's go to SI units. Right now we know what chemistry is. I know how to define chemistry. So now I'm going to go into SI units. SI units. So we have different units in chemistry. 
I would have different um, in terms of measures in chemistry. But one of the things we use apart from the units is the prefixes, right? So every unit usually have in chemistry usually have prefix. So we're we'll gonna do that today. I'm gonna write the prefix down. So we'll write prefix. And you probably already know this. I'm gonna uh, draw a line here. I'm gonna write abbreviation. Abbreviation. Let me draw a small line here. The next thing I'm gonna write is the meaning, what that means. The meaning. I'm gonna put that, give a big line there. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is the short form. Short form. So it's gonna be small. Then I'm gonna have example. Examples here. So let's put, let's draw a line here. So the first one we're gonna be looking at is Terra. Terra prefix. And that is with a, a capital T, Terra. And what that means is one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 and they have comma zero zero zero. So you have uh, 12 zeros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the short form for that because uh, scientists don't like writing uh, things too long, they like to sh shorten things, you know. That's why we, we just catalyst in chemistry so we can shorten the time of the reaction. We don't want it to spend the whole year. So, how do you write Terra in a short form? You write 10, then you can number of zeros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. To write 12. So this is in power form. So 10 raised power 12. Right? That is tera. So an example is one terabyte. One terabyte. Right? So you, you can write that as a, a terabyte is a, a byte is B usually. So you have one C B. So when you go to Amazon or you go to um, you go to Best Buy, you want to buy a hard drive. And you're looking at the biggest hard drive, you go by the terabyte, right? The TB. The tera here is T, and that T is 10 to the power 12. So one terabyte, uh, which is a lot. Uh, back in the day, uh, it is, is a lot. Now it's a small thing. Uh, right now, you can buy 100 terabyte, 5 terabyte, whatever it is. So that's an example. Uh, one terabyte. So that's how you use that. One terabyte. You use the capital T, and it means one with 12 zeros and you do short form is 10 to the power 12 and an example is one terabyte okay the next one we're going to look at is giga giga and that is used g and giga is one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 that is the way you write that is 10 again you count number of zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you write 9 right here. So that's 10 to the power 9. So a giga is 10 to the power 9. And an example is 1 gigabyte. 1 gigabyte, right? So yeah, that's 1 G. The byte is B. Okay. That's how you write that. So you can get one gigabyte of ram on your computer or you can have 32 gigabyte of ram on your computer so that giga right there means 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 9 is giga so one gigabyte so if you have two gigabytes that'll be two times 10 to the power 9 so if you're going to write two gigabyte that'll be two times 10 to the power 9 right or you're going to write two gb so when you go to Best Buy to buy something and you see two gigabyte, you can easily do the math. Now two gig oh two, two gigabyte that means two times ten to the power nine bytes, right? That's what it means two gigabyte. That means you can take that much space, okay? So that's an example of two gigabyte. So you deal with this on a constant basis in life, you know. The next one that we're gonna deal with is mega. Mega. And I'm sure you've heard of mega before, and we use the N for that N. And what is mega? Mega is one comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. So that is 
6. So you have 10 raised to the power what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10 raised to the power 6. So an example, again, I'm going to use something you're very familiar with because everybody uses computer. 1 megabyte. 1 megabyte. So the byte, this byte right here is usually B. Some people use big B, some people use uh, small B. 1 megabyte of data, 1 megabyte of whatever it is. So as you can see, this is way bigger than this. This is 3 over 12. This is bigger than, bigger than 3 over 6. So if you have 1 megabyte of data, it's small. If you have 1 gigabyte of data, it's considerably larger than this. If you have 1 terabyte of data, it's extremely larger than this because that's by almost a thousand, right? So that's, that is the prefix. The next one we'll be dealing with is kilo. Kilo. And you've seen this multiple times. An exam, and you write that as 1, 0, 0, 0, 3 zeros. So that's 10. Which is about what? 3. So we're going to write 3 on the top. So an example is a kilogram or kilobytes or uh, kilovolts. So, so let's, use, let's, use, let's change. Let's use kilovolts. Come around. Kilovolts. So if you go to your transformer in your house, don't touch it. You can you can see a kilovolts. So this, this is an example of uh, um, um, how you write, how you use the prefix kilovolt. So the kilo there means a thousand. That means if I say I have one kilovolt, which is KV, volt is, uh, is, is in V, that means I have 1,000 volts or kilo ampere. If I have kilo ampere, that's I have 1,000 ampere, which is the ampere is the unit for current, right? So you have one kilovolt. Or an exam example, if you use the one we're doing right now, one kilobyte, right? One kilobyte, which is one kilobyte, one kb. There was one, there was once upon a time one kilobyte was was uh, a considerable amount of data. Um, when you send text messages, it's really in kilobytes, right? When you when you open a picture on your phone. And you go to properties of that picture. You might have it in kilobytes. Usually, you can have some like uh, you can have some like three megabytes picture, which is three thousand bytes, right? Three thousand. We we'll say mega. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, three kilobytes. I mean, three three kilobytes, which can be three thousand bytes, or you can have the picture to be three megabytes, right? For example, that would that would that would uh, three megabytes would be one million bytes, right? One million. What is one million? So you can have something like that. So the tens by three is kilo. Kilo is one thousand, which is tens by three. One kilobyte is one kb. So you use this on your daily life. So that's an example of prefix. And in mathematics, we use it a lot. You know, so when we start doing math and start doing indices, you're gonna come across this short form right here. The next one is ecto. Ecto, and we we going down more ecto is usually h and that's 10 that's 100 ecto is 100 <laughs> so if you want to say 100 you can say one ecto one ecto that's 100 okay um what is is 100 so that's 10 is part two okay so you can say one ecto one ecto bytes which is 100 bytes <laughs> one one ecto bytes 100 bytes right so usually you will see it as uh, 100 bytes like that, 100 bytes. So the next one we have is DECA, and DECA is D-E-K-A, okay? And you write DECA as D-A, DECA is D-A, and that is 10, 10, okay? And that is 10 to the power 1, that's DECA. So an example is um, decabyte, decabyte, which means 10 bytes, okay? That's an example, decabyte, it means 10 bytes, 10 bytes. So that's one of the things we use in chemistry. We use quite a few. Uh, now we're going to the, to the uh, ones that we use. See, these are very common. We're going to try and mark out the common ones that we use in chemistry a lot. Uh, we, use, we use these. This, this, we use this a lot in chemistry.
The next one that we have is Desi. Desi. And Desi is D. Okay? Desi is D. And what does that mean? That means uh, 1 divided by 10. And that is 10 to the power minus 1. Okay? Desi. And now an example is you can say uh, uh, decimeter, right? Or uh, decibytes. They don't like decibyte, but you can say decimeter, right? You can, you, can, you can use a decimeter. Okay, a decimeter, that's an example. So the next one we have is centi. Centi. And centi is C. And C, that is 1 divided by 100. And that will be 10 raised to the power minus 2. Right? Centi. 2 centi. Right? You can say 2 cents. 2 cents. Which is the same thing as 2 divided by 100 for dollar. Right? 2 cents. So the next one that we have is milli. Yeah, milli. And milli is M. Milli is M, and milli is 1 divided by 1,000, right? 1 divided by 1,000, that's milli. So you have milli, 1 divided by 1,000, and that's 10 to the power minus 3. So now we're getting close to what we use a lot in chemistry also, this one. Occasionally we use this, we use this one a lot. So you have 1 millimeter, right? If I say I have 1 millimeter, for example, that means I have 10 to the power minus 3 meters. That's what I have. That's what that means. So, 1 milli, 1 milli, this is milli right here. 1 milli is 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So, I have 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So, keep that in mind because once we start doing combustion, we're going to use that a lot. The other one we have is micro. We use a lot of micro because sometimes in chemistry, we look at very microscopic things, right? So, we use micro. Micro is usually written with mu, like that. It looks like uh, a U with, a, with an accent. And that is 1 divided by 1, 2, 3, okay? You also have 1, 2, 3, okay? That is, that is, that is micro. And that is 10, 10 raised to the power minus 6. So if you look at mega, which is, uh, we have six zeros, and you have uh, micro, you also have six zeros, but it's minus, minus because micro is 1 divided by 1 million. And that is, mi that's, that's micro. So, you can say micrometer. Or, um, yeah, you can say micrometer, which is uh, micrometer. So, for example, when you say 1 micrometer, if you say 1 micrometer, um, if you say 1 micrometer, so... That also mean one micrometer. That's what it means. That's one micrometer. And in some cases, you have to measure that small. There are, there are measuring devices that can measure a micro, extremely small, right? So let's go to the next one that we have on the list. We have nano, right? Nano. And nano is. In abbreviation, we use N for that, nano, in chemistry. Or even in physics, we also use N for nano. And nano is 1 divided by 100, 000, 000, again, 000. So when you see, when you see that, um, when you see that, the short form is going to be 10 raised to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, minus 9, because it's it's a 1 divided by that number, so you have minus 9. And you have heard of nanometer before? Nanometer? Or you've also heard of nanoparticles. When you hear of nanoparticles, that means particles that are this small. So, for example, you say nanoparticles or nanoscience. Nanoparticles are particles that are so small that they are in the range of terrace to the power minus 9. These are tiny, tiny particles. Uh, very, very small particles. And the next one we have Pico. That's the last one. The last one is Pico. 
and we use P for that. And as you can see, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you have 10, you have 12 zeros. So that will be 10 to the power minus 12. And pico particles are extremely small. Pico particles are extremely small. These are small, very, very small particles. You cannot see them with your, with your natural eyes. You need some huge uh, microscopes to see, um, to see uh, all these particular uh, kind of particles, right? So these are very, very small particles. So these are the um, SI units that are the prefix that we use in chemistry. And these nano and pico are also very, very important in chemistry. We use that quite a lot. When we get to microchemistry level, when we start talking about the atoms, uh, they are in the range of uh, pico, uh, pico particles, much lower than that, right? So we use that a lot in, in, in chemistry, and it's going to be difficult to want to calculate in chemistry and write all this out. So instead of writing them out, you can use the short form. For example, for example, For example, in your math, you've come across 10 to the power minus 6, okay, times 10 to the power minus 8. So in math, in chemistry, we use something like this too, because sometimes we have uh, different different uh, uh, units that we we'll, that we'll calculate. And for example, you have uh, this is going to be, you're going to take one of these, 10, okay, and then are going to add this together. So you have minus 6 plus minus 8, right? And that'll give you 10 minus 6 minus 8, and that'll give you 10 minus 14. So 10 minus 14 is very, is even smaller than the pico. So if you want to write this this pico, you can actually you can actually com, uh, convert this to pico. So this gives you, for example, 10 uh, minus 12, right? Times 10 uh, minus 2 okay that is still 14 right so you can you can actually say you can say this is uh, 10 minus 12 minus 2 pico for example to make your life a lot easy right so that is uh, that is in chemistry take for example when to calculate the force of two bodies and it's just an example don't panic so you have force is what G M1 M2 divided by R squared right um this r is the is distance or the rate between those those items so you have two masses and you can calculate the force that this mass we we uh the, this gravitational force right here this mass one mass so, so you have two bodies so you have a body you have another body revolving around this body you have a distance between these bodies let me write this circle very well so you have you have uh a smaller body you can have a bigger body and you want to calculate the force, right, between them. You have a distance here, which is how. In chemistry, for an atom or for an electron that is so small, that is about 10 to the power minus 16, for example, that is 10 to the power minus 16, when you calculate, you have G is equal to G times 10 to the power minus 16, times 10 to the power minus 16, and then you have your R squared. You see how small these values are very small by the time you add this together it's going to give you f is equal to give you g 10 minus 16 uh minus 16 is minus 32 r squared right so you see how small this is that's why we use this prefix because sometimes we deal with very very small units and this is an example of the kind of things we deal with in chemistry sometimes so again chemistry has prefixes and they are very useful in calculation as we go from this basic level of chemistry on what the prefixes are, I will start climbing up in chemistry. You say that you'll be grateful that this short form exists, right? So the next thing we're going to go to right now is the units, uh, the SI units that we use in chemistry. SI units in chemistry. So that's going to be our next, um, next um, thing that we'll be discussing right now. SI units in chemistry so in chemistry we measure quite a lot of things one of the things we measure is length 
What's the measure of mass? We measure pressure. Okay, we measure these things. What's the measure of volume? Even in real life, in our daily life, we measure length, measure mass, measure pressure, we measure volume. Uh, we also measure temperature. What else do you think we measure? We should measure energy, right? We measure energy. We should measure current. Okay? We measure all of these things in our daily life. How do I know we do? A lot of us travel. Before you drive a car, sometimes you wonder, what is the mile? How, what is the mile? You know, how far is it? What is the mileage? You measure that. And then, sometimes you check your watch and say, what is, what is the temperature today? How hot is it going to be today? Right? I live in America. And in America, we usually use miles. To, to say length, distance. But in chemistry and in SI units, we don't use miles. We don't use foot. We don't use inches. We use meter. M E T E R, which is in N. In most of the questions you will see in chemistry, in most of the texts you read in chemistry, the meter is going to be what you're going to be dealing with. Not, not miles, not foot. Not inches, but meter. You're gonna do with meter, so you gotta learn that. That meter is one of those things you're gonna be dealing with. So an example of that, I'm gonna draw a line here, is hundred meters. Hundred meters. That's an example. That's how you say, oh, I'm gonna be going hundred meters. And if you if you travel to other parts of the world, say at the UK or Canada, they use meter instead of miles. Uh, when talking about length. So the next one you're going to deal with is mass. We use kilograms. Kilograms. That is the SI unit for chemistry, for mass. It's kilograms. Not pounds. Not pounds. Kilograms. And kilograms is represented by kg. So this one is going to be 100 N as an example. And then you can say, how much does that thing weigh? And someone will tell you, it weighs one kilogram. One kilogram. Okay? They'll tell you, it weighs one kilogram. Let me write it out. One kilogram. Which is what? One kg. In chemistry, you won't say one pound. No. You'll say one kilogram. In SI units, it's going to say one kilogram. Not one pound. Because we don't use pounds. In chemistry, we use the SI units. So this is the SI units right here. This is the SI unit right here. So we use one kilogram. So the next thing is pressure. What do we use in pressure? Don't be tempted to say you use atmospheres a lot as the SI unit. Well, no, we use Pascal as the SI unit, which is P. A okay. Pascal. So what is the pressure? One Pascal, right? You can say one Pascal, one PA, okay? We're gonna write out as one Pascal, which is one PA. And you can definitely convert from Pascal to atmospheres, to millimeter mercury, to, you can convert to anything you wanna do, but the SI unit of pressure is Pascal. The next one that we have, and I have here is volume, and volume, is in meter cubed. Meter cubed. Which is m raised to 3. Meter cubed. So, 1 meter cubed is equal to 1 m raised to 3. And also in chemistry, you can convert between 1 meter cubed to liters to gallons. You know, I know in America we use gallons a lot. Hey, that thing is 55 gallons, you know. But <laughs> in chemistry, we don't use gallons. We use meter cube. Uh, we don't use liter. We use liter uh, in some cases, but the SI unit is actually meter cube and sometimes milliliter, right? So you're going to be saying that a lot in chemistry, meter cube. So the next one I have is temperature. And temperature, the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. 
Kelvin, which is K. And I know again, you might be tempted to say SI units when they ask you in the exam or whatever it is. So what is the SI units of temperature? You can say it is Fahrenheit. It is not. It is not. That is wrong. You can also even say it's Celsius. But the SI unit that we use in chemistry is Kelvin. Now you can you can actually convert between Kelvin uh, and Fahrenheit or Kelvin and Celsius or Kelvin and Rankine. You can you can convert you can convert. So for example, water boils. Uh, you can say oh, what at what temperature does water boil or at what temperature does water freeze? For example, you can, you can say minus thirty two it freezes or at zero degree it freezes. Right in the case of um, in the case of Kelvin, it's not zero degrees. It's actually it's actually degree Kelvin. Use degree Kelvin. So you have two seventy three minus two seventy three Kelvin. Sorry, minus zero Kelvin. Is that temperature where everything ceases? Sorry, no minus, minus zero Kelvin, where everything ceases to move. At that temperature, everything there's nothing. There's no vibration in any molecules. You can also have. Uh, uh, 273 Kelvin, which is the temperature where water boils, right? So you have, um, let me put degree right here, degree Kelvin. So you have that for temperature. The next one you have is energy, and energy we have it as Joe. I know you've had that before multiple times, Joe. So you can convert between Joe and Watt, um, you know, you can convert between them, but the SI for energy is Joe, and we use J for that. So you have five joules. And then if you want to use the prefix, like I told you, prefix because it comes before the unit. A prefix uh, comes before, a pre means it comes before something. So for example, as you say five kilojoules, for example, five kilojoules. We already learned about prefix kilo, which means a thousand, and that gives you five thousand joules, right? So that's five kilojoules. The next one we have uh, is current, and current is ampere, ampere, and that is A, we use A for ampere. So you have 5 amps, sometimes you can, you can see it as 5A. If you check your charging, uh, charging brick for your phone, you can see something like 5 milliamp, the M here is milli. And don't forget what we learned about milli. How many? What is what does what is the prefix milli mean? Um, when we talk about uh, milli, and I told you that if you go back to the video, milli is ten to the minus three, right? So if the, if you have five milliamp, yeah, it just means five times ten to the minus three amps. That is small, and that is, is if you if you write this out, zero point zero zero five amps. That's what that means. So. These are the things you're gonna see a lot in chemistry. We talk about you know different different units in chemistry, the SI unit. So that is the uh, that is that about SI units in chemistry. Uh, this is what you're gonna be seeing a lot as we move from uh, from um, one topic to the other. So before I go, I want to uh, give you this to try out. I'm gonna solve first three and just solve the the meaning two. So for example, how do you write that two kilometers? Two kilometers, how do you write that out in a short form? That would be two K for kilo M. <clears throat> That's also two thousand meter. Since kilo, you know what? Let's do it together. Two. What is kilo? Kilo is one thousand. We have meter. So that is what? 2,000, 1,000 is 2,000, so that's 2,000 meters, okay? So 2 kilometer, 2 km is 2,000 meters. Let's go to 5 megabytes. So 5 megabyte is 5 MB, okay? And that is 5, what is mega? Mega is 10 raised to 6, okay? So if you write that out, 10 by 6 bytes, so if you write that out, that will be 5 times this, which is a uh, million. So that you're going to have 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 bytes. Okay. 
So what about two times ten to the power six bytes? This one is simply as two gigabytes. That's what it makes. Um, make uh, make megabyte. Sorry. So that is MB. So that's what that means. Two megabytes. So what is three ten to the power twelve? Um, you can try that out. See how you can write that out using the prefix uh, in a very short form. You know, um, write that out. Um, it's very simple. Don't forget that 10 by 12 is Terra. And then also do 5 centimeters. And how do you write 5 centimeters? What is, what is cent how do you write centi? How do you write centi? So you have a centimeters, right? So do that. If you don't get it right, you can um, put that in the comment section. If you get it right, also put it in the comment section. Um, I would like that a lot. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I appreciate you know taking the time to watch this long video of chemistry. And in this video, we actually cover quite a lot. We cover what is chemistry. We cover the SI units and how you write them. And then we also cover you know the uh, the SI units that we actually use in chemistry. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, share with your friends. Uh, drop a comment if you have any suggestion and also, uh, you know, like. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching and have a great day.